So Blender just came out with version 3.3 which came packed with this new hair grooming system in it and I wanted to test it out and put it against the old particle based hair system. A few months back I was trying to learn the old particle based hair system and was able to get these results in a matter of hours. So let me try and remake one of them using the new hair system and see where it lacks and where it does. In short, a pros and cons list. So that's what we are doing in this video. Before getting started though, I highly recommend downloading the sample file that was released with the new version. It has a lot of geometry nodes based modifiers if I can call them that. They act like add-ons that will help you replicate some of the effects you might have seen in the old hair system. I watched a bunch of videos on YouTube and assumed that these modifiers were included by default in Blender, but they weren't. They need to be appended into every project where you need them. So go ahead and download that, link will be in the description. Okay, let's begin. Let's start with a quick demonstration of how to set this new hair system up and then take a brief look at all the tools that are at our disposal. So to set it up, you select the mesh and add an empty hair curve. With the curve selected, you go to sculpt mode and now you can actually start doing something with it. Press T to see all the tools on the left. Let's look at the add brush first, starting with some important options just above it. I think radius and count are pretty self-explanatory. In the middle though, there are two brush types available now. The spherical brush type is a new feature. I'm very bad at explaining technical things, but to put it simply, the projected brush treats all the hair that it sees as a two-dimensional plane and doesn't take their position in 3D space into consideration, while the spherical brush knows what curves are closer to the cursor and makes changes based on that. Then in the curve shape drop-down, there are two important fields. First is length, which determines the length of each curve. This is the same as the length field in the old hair system. And then points, which determines how many points there will be on the curve, which was there in the old hair particle system as well. Now you can add hair, remove hair, comb hair, grow or shrink hair. These options were there in the old hair system as well, but the density brush and the snake hook brushes are new in this version, and I use them a lot throughout this experiment. I'll show their practical use when we get there in a minute. Before that, let's look at those geometry nodes based modifiers that came with the sample file. To make them available in your project, go to File, then Append, then select the sample file, go to Node Tree, and then select everything and click on Append. Next, go to the Modifiers tab with the curve still selected, add a geometry nodes modifier, and from the drop down list, you can select from the different options the Blender team made available through the sample character. I'll start with the hair noise node. This is pretty straightforward. You increase the strength to increase the noise in the hair. This is most similar to the roughness tab that you saw in the old hair system. If you go into the geometry node setup, you see a float curve node that you can use to define the shape of the noise, which I think maps to the kink option in the old hair system. As a beginner, I prefer the old hair system because there's a slider for everything and I don't need to do anything manually. But if you're up to speed with geometry nodes, you can do so much more with this new hair system. It's crazy. Next, let's look at the randomized length node. This is also pretty straightforward. You set a min and a max, and then the hair length will vary randomly between them. There's also the hair thickness node, which replicates this menu from the old hair system. You don't actually see any fields when you open this node, so I would suggest you go into the geometry nodes tab and plug the two min field into the group input, and then you can change the overall thickness of the hair from the modifiers tab itself. Inside the geometry node setup, you will again see a float curve node which has three points in it. Each point determines the thickness of either the top, the bottom, or the middle of a hair strand. We had a similar menu in the old hair system, but it only had the tip and the root as options. Then there's the resample modifier that you can use to set up a global value for the number of points on each hair curve, overriding the initial value that you set up when adding the hair. You can also simply assign a material to the hair system here. There's also the delete hair node that just helps remove a portion of the hair that you've already added. This can be used in situations where you added way more hair than you intended to and then don't want to use the subtract brush to remove them manually. This comes pretty handy in that case. There are other node systems in the sample file as well, like the duplicate and offset node, which kind of tries to replicate the children interpolation thing that was there in the old hair system. It didn't really work, so I couldn't use it for this video. Okay, now that I've covered the basics, let me get to an actual project and test it all out. I'll be trying to replicate this giraffe image that I showed earlier. I obviously didn't model the giraffe or the hoodie or any of those animals that you saw in the beginning. They were all from Sketchfab, so I'll link them in the description. Now I used all the options and tools and everything that I showed you in the first part of the video to get this new hair system working on the giraffe. So I think I better get to the pros and cons list right away. Okay, let's start with the con. When I was initially setting up the hair system, I noticed the add brush was really lagging. I was barely able to move my mouse and Blender was really struggling to add even 10 strands of hair onto this giraffe head. I figured out this was because the mesh was too dense, so I decimated it a little bit and that really helped, but it was still not perfect, so I decimated the model a little more and this time it got really smooth. Now I have to admit I have a really outdated laptop with a GTX 1650 and 16 gigs of RAM and a Ryzen 5 4600 edge processor. If you have a better computer, you probably wouldn't have this issue, but I'm sure there are a lot of users in this community that do have a weak PC, and I didn't face this issue in the old hair system, so I thought I'd mention it. Once this issue was resolved, it was time to spread the hair around, and I have to be honest, I had a lot of fun doing that. 
It was really satisfying to paint the hair around. I felt like a barber, but in reverse, instead of cutting the hair, I was adding it. <laughs> now this is a pro for sure. The amount of control you have when you're manually adding each strand of hair is really liberating. In the old hair system, the hair particles just spread around everywhere and you had to use weight paints and whatnot to control where they went, which is not always fun. And I'm aware there was a similar option in the older system as well, but this was way more fluid and intuitive. So that's plus one for the new system. Next, I tried combing the hair curves, but I found another tiny little con, which was when you're combing through the hair curves, there's a high chance you will push the hair into the mesh. Since there's no system to prevent that from happening right now, it's there in the older system. You can set a threshold value and the curves will never collide into the mesh, but there's nothing like that in this new system for now. But as far as I know, I think the team is already working on something to prevent that. So it's not a big deal. Just reduce the radius of the brush and comb a little carefully. That's all. But now comes the biggest pro for the new hair system. I think this is what will define the future of this whole thing, which is more and more brushes like the snake hook brush. If you've ever used the snake hook brush for sculpting, you know what it is capable of. And now you have that in this new hair grooming system. It's really effective if you want to add some variation throughout the hair spread. It's so effective that you're bound to overuse it. It does so much with so little effort that you're bound to go crazy with it. And I'm sure there are going to be a bunch of other new brushes in the future as well that will help customize the look even more. So this is a huge pro for the new hair system. Now next on the list is the density brush. And I think it'd be harsh of me to say that it's 100% a con because I can see a lot of instances where it will work better than the old particle based hair system. But let me explain. One of the biggest issues I faced while remaking these images was the number of hair was never enough. I could always see the skin underneath the hair. And at first you might think, just increase the count on the ad brush and go crazy with that. And you'd be right. But an even better method would be to use this new density brush, which in its auto mode will fill up or empty the gaps between the already painted hair. So you just need to put a count value here and then you can paint on wherever you need more or less density. But my point is, it wasn't this tedious in the old hair system. All you had to do was activate the interpolated children hair particles and it would do the work for you automatically. And then you could increase the number of children hair as much as you wanted. In the new system though, you have to do it manually, which as I said, is kind of tedious. But on the other hand, it gives you a lot more freedom as well. You have full control over the density. You can paint it on wherever you want it and remove it where you don't need it. And this customizability would be tedious in the old hair system. So it's not a con, but not a pro either for my particular use case, as I was looking for a quick result and didn't need a lot of customizability. So the old hair system was kind of better in doing this. Now the last thing on the list, which is unfortunately a problem. Before mentioning it though, I'm not trying to shit on the new hair system by any means. I'm fully aware that it's at a very nascent stage, but it's already so functional and better in so many ways from the old hair system. So I feel bad even listing these negative points, but I hope that doesn't take anything away from the developers who've been working on it for a long time. So just take this video as a case study and nothing else. That being said, let me tell you the problem. Now, if you open this data properties tab that looks like a bunch of hair and you look underneath the surface section, you'll see this hair system is attached to a UV map. And while working on animals other than the giraffe, I got this invalid UV map error most of the times. The issue as it turns out, and as you might have already guessed, is that this new system doesn't work if the model has overlapping UVs, which was never a problem with the old hair system, which is the only reason why this is a con. It's not even a con, it's just how it works. So if you get this error, this is how you kind of solve it. You just go into the object data properties of the surface you're spreading the hair on, go into the UV map section, click on the little plus icon and make a new UV map, tap into edit mode, press U, select smart UV project, and increase the island margin by one unit. Now that should solve the problem for most people, but if it doesn't, you're just gonna have to manually find overlapping islands and separate them in the UV editing tab. Once you're done with that, just go back to the hair tab and paste the name of the new UV map, and that should fix it. And again, this isn't really a problem with the tool, it's just how it works. And in its defense, I was using some really weird third-party models, which had really weird topology and UVs, so I'm partially to blame here as well. But now at this stage, I was almost done with the grooming process for the giraffe. Just an additional tip for beginners who are trying to make something like this. Don't be lazy while you're making these hair systems. Add as many layers as you can to sell the detail. Like for this giraffe alone, I had four hair systems. One for the overall body, one for the horns, one for the ear and the chin, and then another one for the back. The more layers you add, the better the final result. Look at the sample file itself. There are so many layers in it, I can say it with certainty. That's the reason why the whole character looks so damn good. So do that for your project as well. And with that, let me show you how the final thing turned out. Here they are, 
in my opinion i think they look almost identical the old hair system version actually looks kind of cartoony to be honest like it looks more like a stuffed toy and the left one looks a bit more realistic so in summary the new hair system shows a lot of promise i think the old hair system is really easy to pick up it's great for beginners but this new system will be way more powerful once the community starts making their own modifiers and the developers add a few more brushes in the future updates not only that, this new system feels faster and more intuitive than the old system. So I can't wait to see how it grows over the next couple of years. Before ending the video, just a final point. I did try replicating other animals as well, but for some reason it just didn't work out. It was not just the UV island issue, there were a bunch of other problems as well. The topology, the overall construction of the third party meshes that I was using. And I just couldn't figure out a solution for them, but I thought I'd mention them because it didn't happen with the old air system. So yeah, that's it. That's it for this video. Thanks for watching. I'll see you guys soon. Bye-bye.